y'all and welcome back to another Photography Friday. My name is Jane Corley with Pick Visions Media Arts and Photography. If it's your first time here, welcome! Every Friday we go over tips, tools, and techniques for my fellow photographers and media business owners to become better in their craft. Today's episode is all about how to become a pet photographer. So let's get started. First and foremost, what is your relationship with pets? Do you love pets? Do you love animals? Do you have a mess of cats or dogs at your house that you just love holding and snuggling like I do. I've got two dogs and a cat and a fish if you want to count that, but we love animals at our household so we do a lot of pet photography. Animals have a heightened sense of security so don't just assume that you're good with animals because you're good with your dog. Make sure that you understand the relationship between people and animals so that you can be more comfortable and that animal can be comfortable with you as well. Animals can tell if you are uneasy or if you're frightened or if you're just not sure of yourself and they will take that as you are uncomfortable around them and that will make them nervous. So make sure that you are open, that you are nice, you are kind, you are loving to the animal that you're taking photos of so that they know that you are in a cooperative relationship. If you're aiming to make a living off becoming a pet photographer and only a pet photographer, that's awesome and totally doable. But I would suggest taking some classes at a local pet academy. A lot of pet shelters and pet stores will have information that they can give you. And there's some great resources online about how to understand different types of pets, as well as different types of breeds of pets, especially with dogs. There are so many differences from a Jack Russell Terrier to a Great Dane, even to Labradors. We have two black labs and they're totally different from golden retrievers or even chocolate labs. So do your research if you're wanting to become a dog photographer of the different breeds of different kinds of dogs so you'll know how to communicate with those animals. You must understand the handling skills of your client or the pet you're taking photos of. Understand if this animal is needing to be on a leash or if they're free roam or if this animal needs to be close handled or if they're good from far away. You need to understand from the client's owner, the person who's paying you, the people, what type of animal this is because one black lab is not the same as another black lab. I know tons of black labs who are hyper and all over the place whereas our female black lab, she would be with me fine right beside me every single day without a leash. So make sure to understand from the person who you are being hired by what type of animal this is and what sort of needs that client needs based on the handling skills of that animal. There is no need to put your business at risk because of the handling skills of an animal. You don't want to get bitten or you don't want something to happen by a scratch that gets infected or just somebody jumping on you and you end up breaking an arm or breaking some of your equipment. It's not worth it. So make sure to understand the limitations and restrictions of an animal because yes, it is like shooting an infant except for that beast can go from zero to 60 in less than a second and just turn on you because they feel like they can't trust you. So make sure to take into account your business needs as well as the safety of you, your client, and the animal you're photographing so that you don't run any risk of injury. This goes for older pets as well. Do not push a 10 year old dog to run all over the park and chase balls and just act foolish because that's what you want in your photos. Make that animal comfortable, especially if they are older pets. So be transparent with the client about your skills, what your past history of work has been, how comfortable you are around certain animals, and how comfortable you are with taking photos of them with their animal or with props or different techniques within the session. With older pets as well, before we get into location and props and framing and all that kind of stuff, don't rush your animals. Try to get the most out of every position. Try to maybe prop them on pillows or fuzzy blankets, make them comfortable, and work around the needs and abilities of that older pet. As a pet photographer, you will need to get down and dirty. You will be having to willing to get down 
on the ground with these animals and get in these weird contortionate positions to get the shot that you need. You'll have to be fast. You'll have to be observant of when to capture those immediate special moments because like I said, like a baby or even like an event session, these micro expressions only happen once and you must be quick to capture them because it's going to be hard for you to tell a dog to tilt your head 35 degrees. It's not going to happen, y'all. You're going to have to be creative, you're going to have to be quick, and you're going to have to be observant. Find out as much as you can about the animal before the session. What are their likes and dislikes? What are their favorite things to do? What are their things that make them a little uncomfortable or that they don't like very much? Do they like to be around kids or like to be around people or like to be around open spaces and don't like other animals? Make sure to be clear about the likes and the dislikes of that animal so that you don't make them uncomfortable. One important thing to find out is what is their favorite thing to do and their favorite toy or what gets their attention. What's something that will get their attention and hold their attention so that they will look directly at you and directly at the camera and pause and freeze so that you can capture that perfect image. Because you'll never get total control of your subject in pet photography. You must be willing to adjust and get their attention and really just move with what they're willing to give you. Add a few toys and treats and you've got yourself a session. So let's talk about location. Are you going to be at your studio? Are you going to be at their home? Are you going to be inside? Are you going to be outside? Is there a favorite park they like to go play in? Is there a comfy chair in their living room that they would prefer to work with? Make sure to go to where that animal is going to be most comfortable. If you do happen to bring a pet into your studio for a session, make sure that their owner brings blankets and toys and familiar items from their home to place into your studio space. The reason why is because you want that animal to feel comfortable and feel familiar with where they are going to be located. This is going to avoid any sort of nervousness that that animal is going to have because they're in a new space. If that client can also come a little bit early so that they can get accustomed to the space. You don't want them to be whiffing and sniffing around every crevice and cranny instead of taking photos. So have them come a little bit early and take a look and get acquainted with the situation. And if you have animals at your home where your studio is located, make sure that those animals are outside of the location and nowhere near that client coming in if they are uncomfortable with pets. There's going to be enough new smells and new things for that animal to explore before they can feel comfortable in that new studio setting. Especially with cats and small dogs, blankets with textures on them from the client's home that already have the client's smell on them and something familiar for them to wrap up in is going to be more successful than just pulling something out of your towel cabinet for that client to lay on because it's not a smell from their own home. They don't talk with words, they talk with smells. So make sure that you are making that client comfortable. I cannot stress that enough. You need to be familiar, you need to be comfortable, and you need to be treating them like they are a member of your family. Not a guest in your home because that's going to be uneasy for that client. Don't forget treats. Now if you're providing treats for your client, make sure that they don't have any allergies, any kind of special dietary restrictions do encourage your client to bring their own treats because having treats available, even small treats, something that can be given a little bit here and there with slight encouragement behind it and positive attitude and vibes and facial expressions, that animal is going to pick up on those positive emotions within that space and be more susceptible to cooperating. Now if the session is outside in an unfamiliar place, it is definitely imperative for that client to come early and get all the whiffing and sniffing out of the way because you're going to put them in an outdoor environment that may have squirrels running around, it may have little grasshoppers, our, our dog loves to chase grasshoppers. So have them get accustomed and get settled into the area. Make sure that it's not this huge massive area. Make sure it doesn't have a lot of distracting noises if possible and a lot of distracting elements like a bunch of other dogs. Make sure to pre-plan in the area and have the client bring their animal, 
so that that animal can be comfortable with that space. Now, if the animal is not 100% comfortable with being off leash, leave them on the leash. The leash can be edited out in post-production and it is not worth the risk of that animal running off, that animal getting lost, or something happening because that animal is not under its owner's control. If that animal becomes uneasy and runs off, that's going to cause issues for your business. It's going to give a bad taste in your mouth to the client because you are not able to handle that animal. But just leave them on the leash and avoid that complication and you can just take out the leash in post-production. It's a big secret for pet photographers to remove leashes. Now if the animal is good to go in play mode, so they like playing ball, they like playing tug of war, they like running all over the place and fetching and whatever they like to do, if they like to go into play mode, take posed photos last. Get accustomed to taking play mode photos, so them playing around with the ball and running all over the place and having a good time and really just get comfortable with the space because they know that this is a play zone. Get them to play while you sit off in the distance, taking photos with a zoom lens and just really taking in the information from the pet and taking some candid photos of that pet in action. This will get the pet accustomed to you and to the space so they'll be ready to settle down when it comes for posed photos. So as I said earlier, pet photography is like shooting babies and shooting events. It is most like shooting events though. You have no control over what the subject of the photo is doing. You're really just going with the flow and taking what you can get. So let's talk about gear to set you up for success when you're doing pet photography. DSLR camera, you can absolutely use a film camera as well. You will need a zoom lens and a macro lens if you have one available. You'll need all your extra batteries, you'll need all your extra cards, and you'll need a tripod. I know in this case a tripod probably doesn't seem very necessary, but like I've said in all my other tutorials, it's good to have one even if you don't need them or you don't think that you need one. A zoom lens is really great to have if you have the availability to have one, but if you don't, then just standing at a little bit of a distance while they run around and play or just live within their environment and you're able to get up as close as you can to them, do what you can with what you have. There's no need to have all of this fancy schmancy equipment to hold you back from what you're really trying to do. Take what you got and make what you want. Capture the natural personality of the pet and do not strain yourself to get the perfect shot. Creative framing in post-production when you go to edit your photos can make all the difference in the world. You just want to capture the pure essence of that animal and tell the story of their personality. So let's talk about themed sessions for pets. They are all the rage, especially with Halloween and with Christmas and New Year's and milestones, so you may want to have props. First and foremost, talk to the parents of that client and find out how they feel about props, especially outfits. I've met a lot of dogs and a lot of cats who do not like wearing clothes. So do not force an animal into clothes if it's not something that they like because it won't be successful. You won't get some good photos and the animal will just look strained and stressed and it will cause bad vibrations between everybody involved. So make sure if you're going to be dressing a pet up from hat to shoes or whatever your intentions are, just make sure with the parent of that pet that that animal is going to be okay with props because there's all sorts of ways to do props without dressing an animal up. If you're doing Christmas photos, have a cat bat around a Christmas ornament. Have them lapping out of a glass of milk while they have Santa cookies around. Halloween, you can absolutely do costumes. Most pet parents, if they want to do a Halloween shoot with their animal, they will bring a costume for that animal but you can absolutely do a puppy and a pumpkin or you can do a puppy playing in fall leaves. You don't have to dress up animals to get them to perform for themed shoots. For pet birthdays or milestone sessions, you can always go to pet stores. They will provide like a smash cake they provide for babies, but it will be made of pet friendly materials. 
So you can absolutely have them make one and bring it, or you can go and get one for your pet session and just add it to the cost of that session. So let's talk about shooting techniques. Try to use natural light, natural window light, or in an outdoor area instead of using harsh studio lights because some animals, it makes them a little uncomfortable to have the bright lights around. For older pets or for, I know like my female black lab, she gets this Darth Vader <laughs> if she gets too hot. So harsh studio lights can overheat animals as well, so just be mindful of that. Your shutter speed is going to be 1 over 60, if not 1 over 100. That's usually a pretty good happy median because a lot of animals run and go crazy all over the place, so you don't want that blurred motion in the photograph. A shallower depth of field, a lower end f-stop, something maybe, you know, a 2.8 or a 4 or, you know, really even up to f8 is a really good place to stay when you're taking photos of pets because you really want it to be that intimate focal point and getting information of you know the tree lines behind with a higher depth of field is going to give you less of a mission to that photo. You want to tell a story and you want to put the viewer's eye directly to the subject of the photo, which is the pet. And you want to drive the focus of that image, so using a shallower depth of field will help you accomplish this. You want to keep the pet's eyes sharp and you want to get full sharpness on all of the fur on their face and you want to showcase any special markings that make that pet unique. Close framing of a subject can really help tell a story as well. If you know this cat is lazy, take a photo of this cat yawning or stretching out on its favorite chair or blanket. If you know this dog is hyper, have photos of them playing or tug of war and Play with perspectives and angles to make them more visually appealing images. Go to the pet. Go to them and showcase the personality with the pet. This interaction will help make them more comfortable with you as well. If you're having trouble getting the perfect look from that animal, have that animal just lazily, you know, get comfortable where they are. Let's take a cat for instance. Have them get comfortable on their favorite blanket, on their favorite chair, really curl up. Their owner can be petting them a little bit, really making them feel safe. Once they get comfortable, that owner can come around to the back of the camera or even just come out of the frame of what you're photographing. Quickly give them a call like a <coughs> That animal will look up with interest and surprise, snap that photo, and you've got yourself a winner. Mix up your photos. Do not take the same photo, same framing, same technique, same angle. You have to keep moving. As we learned in some of my other tutorials, never stop moving. Always get different angles and different perspectives and from above and from below. Get pictures of them standing on their favorite scratching post or playing with their favorite ball on the ground. Get down on the ground with that animal and add the texture of the carpet on the floor for visual interest. You have to think of perspective and angles when you're taking pet photography. Incorporate foreground and background elements if you're in this pet's home to really tell the story of their natural environment. So lastly, let's get into rates and pricing. Do not shortchange yourself as a professional or as an amateur when you're pricing the products of your services to your client. First and foremost, find out what your hourly rate is. Are you a $20 an hour photographer or are you a $50 an hour photographer? Are you a $100 an hour photographer? What is it going to cost for you to drive to your location and bring all of your equipment with you? What is it going to take you mileage to get to your location? What sort of products is your client going to want produced from your session? Are they going to want prints? Are they going to want digitals? Are they going to want shirts? Are they going to want canvases? What are they going to want as final products for the session? Hourly rate, travel expenses, your experience expense, and products produced. Those are the four things you need to think about if you're an amateur photographer when you're talking about pricing. All of those points combined, you will come up with your final price. 
Remember to come up with a contract as well as an invoice so that pricing and product delivery is transparent between you and your client as well. Amateur pet photography sessions start anywhere from $100 to $300, depending on the time, your experience, as well as the products produced. Professional pet photography can range anywhere from $500 to $2,000 and up, depending on the type of session being performed, the travel expenses, the different types of scenery being used, the different locations, if they're doing outfits, whatever the situation may be, professional pet photographers are going to range between $300, $500, and $2,000, depending on the services provided. So get your experience and value your skills. Do not shortchange yourself or lower your prices to a point where it's not even worth your time unless you are strictly just trying to build your portfolio and you're having friends and family members with their pets help you out to build your portfolio. So I do hope this video was helpful on some tips, tricks, and techniques on how to become a pet photographer. Make sure to tune in next week when we go over modeling photography and client photography who want to capture their inner and outer beauty. Make sure to leave in the comments below any tips, techniques, and tricks that you have for your fellow photographers or any ways that you like showcasing your pets in photography. Make sure to like this video if you learned something new, subscribe, and ring the bell if you have not done so already. And until next time, I'm Jane Corley with Pig Visions, Media Arts and Photography. I'll see you later, guys.